everything around us is either stationary or moving. Things like buildings, lampposts, stones, mountains and parked vehicles are stationary or at rest. And things like vehicles on road, people, animals, birds and water and rivers are in motion most of the time. And even the world, you know, the earth, big, majestic, unmovable, huge, even it is in constant motion. Heck, even the universe is in constant motion. Today I'm back with another chapter for class 7. It's called Force and Pressure and Motion. What is motion? A body is said to be in motion when it changes its position at time with respect to its surroundings. And what is rest? If the position of the body does not change with time with respect to its surroundings, then the body is said to be at rest. What does it really mean? Imagine you have a cycle and it's right next to a wall. Even though the time changes, the placement of the cycle does not change. Okay, with respect to the wall, it does not move. So what does it mean? It means that the cycle is at rest. Now imagine if the same cycle starts moving with respect to the wall, the trees and everything around. That cycle is in motion. As the time changes, the placement of the cycle changes too. And the cycle is in motion. To better understand rest and motion, let's consider the following cases. For the first case, let's look at this flower vase. Now, with respect to the table, the curtains and everything around in the room, it does not change. Even as the time changes, it's right there. So, it is said to be at rest. For the second case, imagine a train passing by. The position of the train changes continuously with time with respect to everything around it. The house, the trees, the posts, the railway tracks. So the train is said to be in motion. Is it possible to simultaneously experience being in motion and at rest? For case 3, imagine people inside train. With respect to the surroundings inside the train, the person is at rest. But if he looks outside the train, everything seems to be moving. We can say that the person's position changes with time with respect to the surroundings outside. Hence, the person is in motion with respect to the surroundings outside and he is at rest with respect to the surroundings inside. For case 4, imagine a boy and a girl running along parallel to each other in the same direction with the same speed. The position of the guy is not changing with respect to the girl and vice versa since they are moving at the same speed and in the same direction. So with respect to each other, they are not moving, they are stationary. But with respect to the surroundings, they are moving. From all these cases, we can conclude that rest and motion are relative. Okay, it all depends from where you see this and you observe whether the body is at rest or in motion. Okay. And this point from where you identify whether the body is at rest or motion is known as a reference point. Now let's move on to types of motion. There are four major types of motion. Translation motion, rotational motion, periodic motion and oscillatory motion. Under translation motion, we have rectilinear motion and curvilinear motion. Consider a car moving on a road. The position of the car changes continuously with time with respect to its surroundings. Moreover, during its journey, all parts of the car move equal distances in equal intervals of time. Such motion is called translation motion. It is the motion in which a body changes its position from one point to another along a straight line or a smooth curve. Translational motion can be of two types, rectilinear motion and curvilinear motion. Rectilinear motion, it is a motion in straight line. Imagine a car moving along a straight road. Now that would be a rectilinear motion. Curvilinear motion is a motion of a body along a curved path. In a curvilinear motion, the direction of the motion of the object changes with time but the orientation of the object remains the same. Here, a car moving on a curved road and these bikers on a curved track are examples of curvilinear motion. 
consider the motion of a fan or for case consider the motion of a fizzit spinner uh, the fizzit spinner rotates continuously about an axis the distance moved by the different points on the spinner is not the same but all the points complete the rotation in the same time such motion is said to be rotational motion rotation of earth about its axis is an example of rotational motion a uh, motion of a spinning top is another example of rotational motion in periodic motion the motion of an object is repeated along the same path at regular intervals of time one complete round of motion of the object which is being repeated is called a cycle the time taken to complete one cycle or duration of each cycle is called time period a motion of the hands of the clock motion of the moon around the earth rotation of earth about its axis and revolution of earth around the sun are examples of periodic motion now consider the motion of a swing are uh, you sitting on the swing and you're displaced you undergo a to and fro motion in regular intervals of time that is after each regular interval of time you repeat your motion by retracing its path like you come back and then you go forward again such a motion is called oscillatory motion in our day to day life we can be sure that no matter what uh, activity that we do we don't just follow one type of motion there is always a combination of motion okay for example in the case of a moving car the wheels of car undergo a rotational motion and translational motion at the same time as earth rotates about its own axis it also moves around the sun when a batsman hits a cricket ball it undergoes both translation motion and rotational motion at the same time as it spins and goes higher a pendulum is an example of oscillatory motion a simple pendulum has a metallic bob suspended from a rigid stand by a thread i know this one is not exactly a simple pendulum it's just a pendulum watch we will talk in detail about pendulum in the next part there is a whole factor of calculation needed and i'll discuss about that in the next part let me repeat so whatever that i talk about from this point forward is something that i'll be discussing in more detail in the part 2 of this video okay this video is just part 1 so in the part 2 of the video i'll be talking in detail about all of these okay so the first topic that we're talking about are the scalar and vector quantities okay a scalar quantity is defined as a physical quantity that has only magnitude and a vector quantity is defined as physical quantity that has both magnitude as well as direction okay so basically scalar quantity does not have a direction vector quantity has a direction both of it has magnitude but scalar does not have direction and vector has direction so let's understand about them in more detail with examples the first the one that we're talking about is distance and displacement uh distance is a scalar quantity okay and it just basically talks about uh, how much ground an object has covered during its motion okay during its movement and displacement is a vector quantity that refers to how far from the point a uh, starting point an object is like you know how far it has covered imagine a person starts from point a to point b along the path okay the blue dotted road okay so when you travel through that road that will be your distance but the displacement is the straight line from point a to point b okay the shortest possible distance Okay, it will not go along the blue line, but it will be a shortest straight line from point A to point B. So, basically, displacement is going to be less than distance in this case. Next one we have is speed and velocity. Uh, speed is a scalar quantity again. It is the rate at which an object covers the distance. Okay, like how fast an object is moving. uh velocity is a vector quantity which is basically speed but with direction okay it tells us how fast a thing is a uh, body is moving but at the same time it tells us in which direction the body is moving 
and if we are talking about speed and velocity we need to talk about uniform and non-uniform motion okay now imagine a body moving along a straight line with a uniform speed okay the speed is constant okay? it's not changing like for example a body uh, a car is moving at 60 km per hour constantly okay then it means that the body is at uniform motion but imagine if a body is moving down a straight line but the speed keeps on changing sometimes it's fast sometimes it's slow you know then it's again faster the so speed is like for example the car speed is going from 60 km per hour then next it's going down to 30 km per hour then 40 km per hour then 20 km per hour then again 70 km per hour it means that the speed is constantly changing okay then it means that the body is in non-uniform motion now if you're talking about non-uniform and uniform motion let's talk about acceleration what is acceleration it is a rate of change of velocity of an object what does it mean well it just means that as the time progresses as the time changes the velocity also changes okay so when you move from 0 to 60 seconds okay and imagine the body uh, gets faster in that time so it means that the acceleration is happening if the body slows down in time then it means a uh, deceleration is happening uh, let's move on to mass and weight uh, mass of a body is defined as the amount of matter the body contains and weight of a body is defined as the force with which earth attracts the body towards the surface mass is a scalar quantity okay it's just uh, how much matter a body contains but weight is a vector quantity so what it has is it also has a direction okay and it's always downwards towards the earth so and we know that whatever is pulled towards the earth you know towards the surface of the earth it is like uh, due to gravity so basically weight is mass and gravity combined okay and we know that the gravity on earth on moon and in deep space is going to be totally different so for body with the same mass that is 2 kg uh, weight is going to be totally different like for an earth it is going to be 19.6 newton and moon 3.3 newton and for deep space well we don't know for sure uh, thank you for watching the video and remember that i will be making a part two of the video where i'll be discussing i'll be discussing many of the topics you know that i've discussed today again Plus, we'll be doing a lot of calculations, you know, mathematical calculations based on vector quantities that we have discussed. And that's it.